What's the deal, YouTube? It's your girl, Miss Honey. Welcome back to the channel, you guys. Happy Sunday. I hope you guys had a wonderful weekend. I have had an action-packed weekend. If you follow me on Instagram, you know that my brother graduated um, from college today. So I had family in from all over, and we just celebrated him and his wonderful accomplishment. Um, and so I am here to do Married to Medicine and then take my butt to bed. <laughs> I have been hitting it hard all weekend, um, but I'm glad to be back before you guys. I missed you guys. You know, Yala ended last week, so we didn't see each other yesterday. I didn't do a video. Um, so I'm excited about being here. I hope you guys are excited as well. If you are new to my channel, please. Um, consider subscribing to the channel. Um, also, if you want to hit that little bell right next to the subscribe button, it just alerts you whenever I do videos. Um, don't remember, don't forget that thumbs up. Don't remember. That is weird. Don't forget that thumbs up as well as the comments down below. I read each and every one of them. Um, we are here to talk about married to medicine. Um, and we have once again, been tempted by the, um, you know, the uh, hopes of a little bit more drama than what we've gotten. But um, again, I think this episode failed at delivering that. I think they're doing a great job at piecemealing it out to us little by little. So this, uh, this uh, review, recap, discussion, whatever, won't be that long. Um, let's talk about it real quick. <clears throat> okay, so this is Married to Medicine Season 6, Episode 8, Pajama Drama. Um, and we see where, um, Jackie and Simone open the episode, just catching up on what happened at Dr. Jared's party last episode, where Quad and Mariah kind of clashed, um, bumped heads, um, both being very strong-willed women and, they have a long tried and true friendship that has never really quite been mended. But Dr. Simone and Dr. Jackie both agreed that um, Mariah continuing to insert herself into Quad's um, story, what she was trying to say and how she was trying to say it really just shut the conversation down. Um, and I have to agree with that as well. They also talk about the fact that Simone and Cecil finally had sex. <laughs> I was like, oh, that must have been the, <laughs> the best. I mean, Dr. Simone admits very, very quickly that she wanted to do it. You know, she didn't want to ask for it. She wanted Cecil to ask her for it so she can go ahead and give him a yes. She had been holding, withholding it from so, him from so for so long. She didn't even realize how thirsty and how horny she was. And once it got going, it was so good. She didn't want it to stop. Like she wanted to be back to back to back with that. I'm like, girl, girl, you don't never let yourself get back up like that. Especially when you got your penis is like right there, like right, right there. Like get on it. You know what I mean? Like get to it. <laughs> So we're excited about that. And Dr. Jackie does admit that Simone seems happier. I said it. I said it either last episode or the episode before. You, you guys would not be having these petty little defensive fights if you guys were having more intimacy in your relationship. Like it just brings all of that down. Like stuff you would say no to. You'd be like, okay, boo, I take care of it. Shovel, you know. It just it just makes things better, especially when you care about each other. So she, uh, Simone did say she had some block, you know, walls up in terms of where the intimacy was concerned. But um, I think she sees now that the closer they get in an intimate level, it's just going to enhance every other part of their relationship. So I'm glad for that. We see Contessa, she's still healing. She's not really getting a lot of rest. One, she won't allow herself to rest. She won't get somewhere and sit down. Two, she's not taking her pain medicine. So she's feeling every little bit of the pain. And when Dr. Scott comes in, she admits that as soon as she dozes off, 
somebody else come in. She's got three beautiful children. They love her. They're used to her being present and active in their lives. So, you know, first of all, one child is not going to let another child be in there without them being in there too. You know what I'm saying? Like you ain't finna get more mommy time than me. So she said one child come in and another child come in and another child come in, you know, and then he's coming in, you know, he helps her with the drain and he talks to her about the, you know, draining, you know, uh, um, for her wounds. And um, he talks to her about getting some rest and taking her medicine, um, taking her pain pill. And she does concede to do that. Um, later on, the ladies do call Contessa from their pajama party and, um, she was going to try to make it, but she doesn't get to make it. They FaceTime her and she looks good. She just talks about making her outside look good. And that way on the inside, she feels better as well. Um, hopefully I think Dr. Contessa might be going through a, just a little bit of post surgery, um, depression. It happens a lot of times, especially considering the kind of surgery that she had, you know, your breasts, these are things that you identify um, with femininity. And when you have something done to these feminine parts, it can sort of put you in that place. Um, everybody is, is, is happy to see Contessa and gives her well wishes and just, you know, encouraging words and woo -woo -woo, everybody except Toya. So... We already know what's up with that. Um, then we see where Aiden and Mariah talking. Aiden's got a lot going on in his job. Evidently, a larger corporation bought um, the company that he works for. He's an emergency room doctor. Y'all know hospitals are business as well. And they are a lot of times owned by other entities. And so even though he's been with this company for 10 years, he's very, very established. He, he's good at what he does. He, he um, maintains and manages the education porch, portion um, uh, of, of what the a firm requires. He's a teacher, a trainer, as well as an emergency room doctor. Um, he may or may not have a job. If he does have a job, it may or may not require him to move to either California, I think he said Houston or North Carolina. Mariah's not feeling any of that. She's concerned. She doesn't want to just pick up and move her family somewhere like California. She loves the South. She really loves Atlanta. Um, and this is where she wants to raise her children. I think a lot of that may be some anxiety about her husband not having a job. But with Aiden's skill set, I am not as worried as Mariah is because he can get a job. Now, can he get a job that's going to put him exactly where he is financially or better? That may not necessarily happen, but certainly um, the most important things to him, which is keeping his family together and whole, he could accomplish um, quite easily here in Atlanta. So that was that. And that was a good moment. It was a good scene to see, you know, the, the, um, I really like Mariah's relationship with her family, her husband, her children. I just like it. I just think it it's one of the more genuine parts of the show. Um, we see Heavenly. Heavenly goes to see um, Dr. Anger management. And she seems to be relaxing a lot more. He says to her, you know, oh, now I get a hug when I come in. You know, like you, you can tell that she's taking her guard down a little bit. She's still kind of abrasive. It, it comes from being nervous and anxious. He asks her about her trip and then there's this pause and she wonders why there's a pause. There's a pause because you're not immediately going into your story about what happened in Miami. And that pause is not a question for the doctor, but it's a question for you. Why are you hesitant to talk about it? And we don't, we get to see a picture of Heavenly's mom, but we don't get to see her face. It's blurred out. And she still has not mentioned that her mom is living, that she talks to her mom, that she has a relationship with her mom. She's brought up the sister a couple of times. It's just, it's weird because um, it's apparent that she's keeping some things private. It's apparent that she's she's holding on to some of her her personal business, which I don't know necessarily is a bad thing, but in terms of being on a reality TV show, people are going to have questions. I certainly do. I mean, people have asked, 
is her mom alive? I mean, I certainly she would have mentioned if her mom had passed. So it's an odd thing, but she talks about just realizing that her sister's room was where her dad died. And he asked her if she had ever mourned. Uh, did she really get a chance to mourn and cry? She thinks that she did at the funeral. She reflects that her mom worked 3 to 11. So she was um, gone when they got home and they had gone to bed by the time she got home from work, how her dad was in um, the um, military most of the time that they were coming up. He was always kind of gone. Um, so she didn't have him in her life regularly. And she sort of laments that maybe how she was brought up is the reason why she's not as emotional, not as communicative as she should be. She thinks that... Um, she doesn't like Mariah because Mariah reminds her a lot of her sister. And more specifically, her sister used to lie on her too. This is what she says. So this is her perception of her and Mariah's relationship that Mariah lies on her. I think this all just goes back to Mariah saying, making a comment about Dr. Damon possibly cheating on Heavenly. That's what I think. I think until that's cleared up, she's going to always kind of look sideways at Mariah. And I guess rightfully so. That's not something you just drop out there and you ain't got no receipts, no proof and all of that. And then she probably scared of any receipts or proof that may come forth. You know what I mean? Like you put put a person in a position where they 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 just don't know how you're going to come out. them. like, what kind of bag you going to come out of with me right now? So there's that. I can see that Heavenly is trying. Um, anyway, we see Quad. Quad is getting moved into her new condo. Her mom and aunt are still there. Um, she is talking to them about some of her feelings. She said that Dr. Gregory tried to contact her twice, but she told him that everything is so emotional right now. It might not be a good time for them to talk. And we've seen in the blogs where they have just been boom, boom, boom. Quad took all the furniture out of the house. This is what he said. And you know, the mistress still talking and all of this stuff. Quad is going through a lot. Her mom gets emotional because her mom had was in a bad marriage and she didn't want that for Quad. Um, and, you know, it's just a moment, but it ends like a lot of conversations in this episode with laughter and reconciliation. So it's a good moment. Um, and it's good to see that Quad's got a support system, Toya and Eugene. So I don't know if Toya's being just being filmed this way or this is who she is, but she's talking to Eugene about how um, she read in the blog that Quad moved out and she filed for papers and she hasn't said anything to us. She hadn't called her friends. She hadn't talked to her friends about it. What's going on? Why is she still wearing her ring? So if you're going to break it up, break up with him and end it with him, why are you still wearing your ring? Why are you talking about that? Why are you asking these questions? Eugene tells her when she's ready to talk, she'll talk. When she's ready to open up, she'll just do it. Just keep it real natural and real calm, which is what everybody has been saying. Quit trying to pressure the girl into talking. But the same kind, the same thing that you're upset with Contessa about, was, which is talking behind your back and having something slick and derogatory to say or what you perceive to be derogatory to say, you're doing the same thing to Quad. So even though you guys had this blow up and this reconciliation at the end of this episode, when Quad looks back on the fact that you had all of these little slick ass things to say about her and her marriage she's gonna feel a type of way about it she's gonna feel a type of way about it okay so boom all right so that's toya and eugene so we get to the pajama jam jam and um I applaud Jackie straight up and down. She had a great setup. She had food there. She had sweets for all the ladies to stay in. They came in their onesie PJs. Everybody looked like they were there to have fun. Dr. Jarrett showed up and Quad showed up. The only person that didn't show up was Contessa because, like I said, Contessa is still healing. And we're going to learn next week Contessa is having some um, post-surgery emotions that's keeping her from um, re-entering, you know, society, coming out of the house, moving about, engaging, dealing with people and taking those new breasts on the stroll, getting used to them, getting acclimated to them. You know what I'm saying? Like she's having some trouble with that. And when they call her, um, 
Everybody is happy and jovial to talk to her on FaceTime, except for Toya. Toya is perpetually throwing shade. Who cares? Um, you, you know, don't say anything. You know, she's just, she just real like, uh, uh, uh. Like, it's obvious she got venom for Contessa. So, let's see what else say. What else? Um, so, they play the imitation game and, um, Simone is up first where they go into this box and they pull out all of these props and wigs and stuff. It helps them imitate someone else in the group. And it's Jackie's hope that if you say these things out loud of what your perception is of a person um, and you can laugh and kid about it, it softens some of the blow of it and it takes a lot of the sting out of it, which I guess is a reasonable thought process. Um, it just depends on if you mean or not. And so when Heavenly said, this sounds like it's going to be messy. And Dr. Jackie said, it's only as messy as you want it to be. Um, pick who you, you know, saying don't pick the wrong person out of the box. Like don't pick, Dr. Heavenly shouldn't pick Mariah because you know, that's going to be the seed for argument, right? That's her point. So let's see, Simone uh, goes first and she um, picks some things out of the box to be heavenly, you know, <laughs> and it's funny, you know, I, I couldn't really pick out who she was talking about. Um, I think maybe she had some more matronly clothes on and had a couple of spots on the whites of her eyes and a bad, bad, bad um, frontal uh, leave out. I probably would have got it a little quicker. Um, but Heavenly thought it was funny. Mariah um, uh, does Contessa, which I think was super, super safe since Contessa wasn't there and she has a relationship with Contessa. It was all in um, in uh, fun and jest and that was apparent. So that was good. Heavenly um, does Toya. Um, and then that exchange between the two of them was funny when Toya went up and made a pull of breasts out. Like, if you want to be Toya, let me show you how to really be Toya. <laughs> So it was a fun game. And then Toya got up and she was Simone and Jackie um, was going to be quiet. And she kept it real above uh, um, highbrow. You know, she just played on Toya liking to cook and <clears throat> all of that. So um, it was a fun game. After that, she had, she said that she'd asked everybody to give questions um, via text. Everybody sent their questions in. She had them printed out and put in a cup and everybody reach in and pull a question out and then answer it for themselves. When everybody didn't get a chance to go, Dr. Jackie went first. And the question was, um, how do you cut off? When do you know it's time to cut off a friend? And she said that, you know, when the friend is not accepting their advice, um, her advice or accepting the things that she has to say or um, I guess being more open to receiving what she has to say she knows it's time to cut them I thought that was weird because it's relationships are about give and take so I don't know it just it didn't seem like a complete answer um, I mean if you always coming at me with a with a criticism then I'm probably not going to want to hear those criticisms a lot so it seemed like a weird thing to me, but, you know, maybe we needed to be there for the whole answer. Um, and so when she says that, Heavenly sort of chimes in and says, I don't mean to break protocol, but, you know, in regards to that, she she gives it to Quad. Now, they had already asked Quad um, some questions prior to starting the games and eating and all of that. They had already asked Quad um, how she was, heavenly asked for how she was, and she was like, I'm okay, I'm just, you know, I'm pushing through, I'm just, you know, I'm like full up right now, and I know what she means, she means like I'm this close to like losing it, so I need to just keep playing, you know, keep it low and slow to the floor, and I don't want to do too much talking about it, because I just feel like I'm gonna, you know, and so everybody kind of respects that, that's why they moved on to the game, so now that um, Jackie's had the question and answered the, her question. Um, Heavenly chimes in, doesn't want to break protocol, but she asked Quad. She says, um, "Are do you think that we are all being good friends to you? Are are we being good friends to you right now?" And she was like, "Well, Quad was like, yeah, well, 
I guess, you know, um, and she said, well, okay, let me ask you this. Are you okay? And Quad again says, you know, I'm maintaining. I'm just, you know, trying to hold it in the road and keep it in the road. It's a lot going on right now. That's why I just wanted to just, you know. And she says in her confessional, she doesn't really want to, it to be deep tonight. She wants to just laugh and talk and just forget about the heavy things that are going on in her life, which I totally get. But it is Jackie's goal to recreate the closeness that they found, the sisterhood that they found in, in, in New Orleans last year. And I think the ladies all want this to be like a sister circle moment. Like they want to laugh and talk, but they also want her to cry and release and give it, give them, you know, everything, leave it with them so they can give them, give her their advice and support her in whatever way they know how. And for whatever reason, Quarz just doesn't want to do it. Mainly because I think she's just been holding it in for so long. Like at this point, she resents having to do it, I think. Toya says, well, can I ask a question? And Quad says, I'd rather you not. And she was like, why? You let her speak and her speak. And she was like, I'm just saying, I don't want to hear it from you right now. And um, Toya rolls her eyes and Quad tells her to fix her face. And uh, Toya says, um, I do whatever F I want to do with my face. And it begins this whole heated, nasty exchange where Toya kind of went off and she was cussing and Quad was doing, you know, that passive aggressive superior thing that she does where, you know, it's just like, I'm going to let you talk. Well, obviously you feel like, you know, it's the thing that you do when you're trying to seem like you're the better one in the argument, like you're somehow just above the person that you're talking to. You kind of condescend and poo-poo and it just infuriates um, Toya that much more. The ladies are gathered around. Somebody was trying to gather Toy a quad and take her away. Quad was like, I ain't going nowhere. And so Jackie sort of intervenes and says that she feels that Toya is expressing love for Quad. This is her way of expressing love. She's frustrated. She loves her. She wants to talk to her. She wants Quad to talk to her. She wants to talk to Quad. She wants to question Quad. She wants to figure out what's going on. It was a moment where Quad kind of heard what Jackie was saying. And, you know, she just offered to for Toya to come over and hug her. And they hugged. And is that that hug that Quad was able to release a little bit and cry a little bit. And all the ladies in the room got a kind of emotional about it because it was just a moment where they were there. They were present when she was vulnerable. And that's what they wanted from her was vulnerability. What I thought was um, truly telling was Mariah was completely silent through all that. Now, she was one of the main ones crying. I think she really, really loves Quad. At the same time, I do believe that as an executive producer, she has a vested interest in this show being interesting. And, and do, in order to make it interesting, there must be a measure of drama. I think that Toya is the catalyst for a lot of that drama. She uses Toya as a catalyst for a lot of that drama as well as herself. You know, uh, and so... Um, you know, it was a good moment. Uh, they ended with, you know, laughter and jovialness. Um, one of the things that Heavenly said is most memorable to me in this episode is that she communicates well. And this is what she said last week. Well, she communicates well with her husband, Damon, but it's a little bit more difficult with women because she's had bad experiences with women. And I can completely understand what she is saying. I really, really can. I have had those experiences as well. I'm a lot more guarded. You know what I mean? I, I talk to everybody. I try to keep it cordial. But in terms of you knowing the intimate details of my life, I'm going to be a little bit more reserved about that because I don't know um, what you're going to do with that, how you're going to regurgitate it, if you're ever going to regurgitate it. You know what I'm saying? Do you know that it needs to be kept? Do you know that you need to let me share that, not you? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's that's just it, it, being in a group of women, being a part of a group friendship is a lot more difficult 
than one would think. So I get it. I understand it. I wanted to say that because that was my takeaway from last week. And I didn't really um, remember that. My takeaway from this week is that, you know, we all have our different ways of expressing love or expressing that we care for as much education as these ladies have. There is a certain level of communication, um, lack of communication that goes on. Um, Toya needed to just tell Quad that she loved her and that she wanted to talk to her and she wanted her to be there. When the stuff came out in the blogs, um, Jackie says she called, she texted Quad immediately just to tell her she was thinking about her and Quad called her right back because she knew that Jackie wouldn't be judgmental. And that says a lot. But that is Married to Medicine. You guys tell me what you think. Um, let's talk about it down below. Um, I hope you guys had enjoyed this, this review recap slash discussion. Um, until next time, honeybees. Mwah, mwah, mwah.